Hey guys, welcome back to the leadership series. This is leadership demand section three, and we are doing 3.8, which is how leading is accomplished. So let's jump into scripture, how leading is accomplished. And I have here the three active agents because it's Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. First Thessalonians 3, 11 through 13, God and Jesus direct ministry and its outcome. Now may the God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all just as we do to you. So that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Clearly, this is Paul and whoever's with Paul. So it's talking about leaders coming to another group of people that need more information about Christ. And guess what? Who's directing it? God and Jesus. Now, let's dig into the Greek. So direct means to straighten fully, removing hindrances to come to one and to guide and direct. So God and Jesus are directing their way. They're removing hindrances so that Paul can come to these people. And then it says, and may the Lord make you increase. Make you is to super abound. This is like mega power. And to make you increase is again to super abound because this word is actually in English. It sounds like different. Make you increase but in the Greek it is the same word said twice in a row like super abound super abound okay so let the Lord super abound super abound and abound in love so that is said two times in a row and in Greek that means you take the word and whatever power it has it's doubled and if they said it three times then it would be tripled okay so it means it makes the nature of that word magnified in value. So super, super abound. So he's really praying hard that these people super, super abound in what? Love. Then um, the next one is another abound. So it said, may the Lord make you super abound, super abound and abound in love. We're talking, wow, right? Abound is to exceed a fixed number and to be over and above in a certain measure and then to overflow in abundance. Abound is used in the known Greek and it is used of a flower going from a bud to a full bloom. So basically what he's saying is, I want to see you mature in true love for each other. Okay. Then 1 Corinthians 2.13, the Holy Spirit teaches the leaders. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So teaches is something taught that can be taught or communicated or direct instruction by the one being spoken of in the sentence. In this sentence, it is the Holy Spirit. So this is taught directly from the Holy Spirit to the leaders and the leaders pass it on. That's what's supposed to be happening. You're supposed to be mature enough in your spiritual life that you hear from the Lord and you can pass on his wisdom. That's what we're doing. Philippians 4.13, all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hebrews 7, 22 and verse 25, Jesus intercedes. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Intercession in the Greek is to plead with one for the purpose of another for the purpose of consulting or supplicating for a person. From, it is, this is from two words. The first is to obtain by hitting the mark, to hit the target on the bullseye, to shoot an arrow at. And the second is to be at rest as an intermediary between two things. So Jesus is praying and hitting the mark with those prayers, but he's the in-between between us and God.
Psalm 7872, by God's guidance and shepherding. So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hand. Shepherded is to tend to in the pasture, a shepherd, a teacher, a herdsman, to tend to the flock, to make friendship with. And guided is to guide, straighten, to lead, or to bring. Psalm 37, 5. Commit your works to the Lord and trust in him and he will act. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Galatians 2, 2 and 20. By the revelation of the Holy Spirit, not me, but Christ in me. So verse 2, I went up by revelation, meaning the Holy Spirit told him to go and communicated to them the gospel. What is the entire purpose of him going to communicate the gospel, which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to those who are of reputation, lest by any means I run or had run in vain. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So up by revelation, this is to disclose the truth, to instruct, to lay bare, to lay naked, to a manifestation and appearance and enlighten, to reveal, especially concerning divine things before unknown, especially through the operation of the Holy Spirit a light for revelation of divine truth also includes visions, dreams, and spiritual revelations. So he knew he had to go and speak the gospel to these people. How? Because the Holy Spirit revealed it to him, either in his head or with words or in a dream or whatever. Okay? That's what it's saying. Second Corinthians 3.18, being transformed, but we all with unveiled face, Beholding as a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Holy Spirit of the Lord. So being changed is to change into another form, to transfigure. This particular word in this particular sentence is in the verb form of PPI, which so this means so occurring in actual time, the subjects are the recipient of the change and it is at a point of fact that it is occurring in real time. So that means it's continually happening to every Christian who understands and has the Holy Spirit. You are continually being transformed in real time. Okay. So the verb is of that motion and change of what? Moral character to make and keep making changes in the inner reality of someone so properly transformed is what it really means to be properly transformed. Okay, we're going to do God sustains, which is lesson 3.9. Your burden is light if you let him carry it, okay? You may be surrounded by hardships and you may have a lot of chaos going on and you may have a lot of um, spiritual warfare, but you're not impacted the same as the person who is not paying attention, not dressed in their armor, because if you are relying on God, he will take that burden from you. You just have to throw it to him and be like, I can't do this anymore. You got to deal with this, or this is too big for me. I, I need help. Or um, this is something that I'm going to pray fervently against and I trust your power will take care of it. Okay. So, um, as an example, a lot of you who follow me know that I go through periods where I'm exhausted. Okay. I've just been pressed to like hear prophecy around the clock for two days or something and I'm exhausted, but I still get out there and do the thing. Right. Well, I was told in the process of all of this, that if I sacrifice my time for you guys, for doing, um, videos for praying for you guys for um doing a prep work to get a prophecy out or something and i'm exhausted the lord will sustain me i have gone for like four days with no sleep i have gone for a month with like maybe one or two hours a day 
and I just feel kind of normal. I might look a little tired, but my brain is fine. I'm like, I can keep going forever, you know, because the Lord is the one who keeps sustaining and keeps renewing me. And that's what happens when you give it to him. And if you're serving him, he will give you the tools you need. Okay. So let's get on to the verses for God sustains in this 3.9. Isaiah 41.10, God does it. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Psalm 23, 1-3. The Lord guides appropriately. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Proverbs 16, 7, those that please God, those that please God, even his enemies are at peace with him. When a man's ways please God, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Philippians 4, 19, God supplies all your needs, and my God shall supply all your needs to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, 6, he will complete it. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 4.13, do all through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Proverbs 16.9, a man's heart plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Isaiah 40.29 and 31, power to the weak, increasing strength, run and not grow weary, fly like eagles. Okay, those are our key words for this verse. Uh, he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Psalm 23, 1 to 3. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for the sake of his name. Psalm 91, one through seven, he that dwells in the secret place. These are the promises. He who dwells in the shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty. I will say to the Lord God, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly plague. He will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the calamity that destroys at noon. Though a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, no harm will come near you. Okay, so here's the graphic that sums it all up. The three active agents are God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. God and Jesus direct the ministry and the outcome of the ministry. How is this done? The Holy Spirit teaches and leads and reveals. This makes Christ in me. Okay. Then we have all things through Christ. And he intercedes with a new covenant of grace. Then we have God, shepherds, and guides. This causes us to be transformed. This transformation makes us commit our works to the Lord and allow him to act. Allowing him to act and having a transformed self, having Christ in us, this leads us back to the top, which is God and Jesus direct the ministry and the outcome. 
because a person who is transformed does not want to direct their own ministry. They do not want to lead without God leading them because they know they're going to mess it up, period. And you know what? We're all going to mess it up because we're humans, okay? You're never going to be perfect at leading. Nobody is. But if you have Christ, he'll smooth it over. He'll make sure that people get what they need out of you or from you, even though you may be messing it up, <laughs> okay? So you don't have to worry. You just have to be willing and you have to be open to being transformed the way he wants you to become into his perfection and then allow yourself to be used, okay? So I hope that's encouraging and I'll see you next time.